Alright everybody, it's album review time once again, and this time we are tackling Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots, or Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots, I don't know where the emphasis in, is on that word, by the Flaming Lips. First thoughts, I've already heard Fight Test, and it's an absolute killer track every second of it. If the rest of the album is as good, I predict we have a solid A on our hands. As always, scoring is on a 10 point scale where the lowest is F minus, 10 out of 100 points possible, and the highest is A plus, 100 out of 100 possible points, and score with the maximum of its track total, 100 times 100, in this case, 1100 points because there are 11 tracks. The scale is as follows, A plus, A, A minus, B plus, B, B minus, C, D, F, and F minus. Now, without further, um, ha, je ne sais quoi, oh, uh, stalling, let's get into the review. Track 1, Fight Test. The album opens on concert noises and a reverberated voice declaring the test begins now. A bouncy synth and acoustic guitars accompany us. The vocals are slightly distant, but in that pretty acidic way where you can just zone out. The bass is powerful and clear, and I love this song. The lyrics are really nice and don't feel forced or anything, and you want to listen to this again and again. The backing vocals are very pretty as well, adding fur to that zoned out, drippy feeling. It's possibly the perfect opener track. It's a certified A+, and every second of Fight Test is absolute peak engineering I've yet to see in any other song. The last minute, with all the overlaid lines, just makes you feel like you're dreaming. I feel I hear this overshot of a wedding at the very end of a blissful dream. Test is over. The ending is word, no, reverberated to hell and back. And A+. Plus. Track 2. One More Robot. Sympathy 3021. On to the first track I've not heard yet. It opens over the same distant synthesized noises as how Fight Test ends. It takes about 30 seconds, but a loud and clear bass comes in both ears, playing different notes in both channels. The song feels a little emptier, but it picks up at a minute and 25 in. One more robot learns to feel something more than a machine. That's an interesting and poetic line. Machine gains sentience. The vocals are still slightly distant and remain powered by the concerningly loud bass that may or may not break my headphones. Dank pods she uses for breaking dollar store nugget phones in all honesty. A very trancy song. I picture the outside of a coffee shop late at night in the rain you hear this from inside the store. The only complaint I have is the volume of the bass. Everything has a slight distort to it, making it sound like it's fading in a way. Everything then abruptly stopped in favor of some synthesized chords and an acoustic guitar. Things like laser noises in the background, and then joined by a string orchestra. It feels like Minecraft background music, but in a good way. Absolutely master masterfully engineered ending. A. Track 3. Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots Part 1. We open out an acoustic guitar which keeps getting cut out, and a voice speaking Japanese in the background. There is a loud bass drum in the right ear. The plot here focuses on the main character here, the titular Yoshimi, in her quest to kill robots. Japanese language voices can be heard distantly in the background, but unfortunately I can't translate them for you. I wish I could. The robots are a metaphor, and the song is told from the point of view of someone looking in on Yoshimi. Not the biggest fan of the flatulent synth, but it's not present throughout the whole track, so I'll let it slide. All the songs in the sound were kind of long, but I like that. It adds the whole dreamscape vibe. I could reasonably fall asleep to this. Still pretty good, and I love the sound engineering, but by god, that is an awful outro, and I hate it worse than how Undone by Weezer ends. A minus. Track 4 Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots Part 2. Guess who's back? Back again. Power up synth. Tell the friend. This is probably the most eventful opener here. It feels a lot like something is wrong when it's broken. It's all clippy and distorted and unclear. Apparently it symbolizes a fight against the robots. People are heard cheering around a minute 30, but it quickly gives way to screaming and noises of terror before cutting back to cheering some seconds later. It's an emotionally gripping track, and the soundtrack to my fucking nightmares. Um, <laughs> terrified. Also, Taco Bell's. It's the shortest track on here, and entirely instrumental. I really don't like this one, and I don't think you're supposed to. It's barely listenable, and I'll give it an according grade of D. Track 5, In the Morning of the Magicians. We open with more of the same from the earlier tracks, minus part 2. So. Very calming and whatnot. I can't really comprehend the meaning of the lyrics being an idiot and all. That's just a joke. I think it's about futility. I don't know, I'm terrible at getting meaning from things. The lyrics are sparse, and most of the song is instrumental. 
It really feels like a lot of time has passed, but not in a bad way. I'm completely lost in this right now. It feels titular, like I'm just waking up from something in the morning. I don't see how anyone with an actual attention span could hate this song. By far the longest track on the album. Cheering noises. And with the B-plus grade, cheering noises and the track as we head on to... Track 6, You Go Tripping at the Gates of Hell. I gave in the morning of the magician a B for B plus for not really engaging me. It feels like a trippy sample of something. It's like what the Sgt. Pepper era Beatles would create if they were in the 90s. The lyrics are really cool and they're about the passage of time. I don't know what the sibilant noise that comes in sometimes is, but I don't like it. It's really irritating. Other than that, the sound design is excellent. It feels a little busy though. And I'm doing my best to ignore the high-pitched noise. Ego Tripping at the Gates of Hell is the perfectly cromulent song. I feel like there should be less going on, however. It's overstimulating, and the vocals compared to the instrumental are a heavy contrast. The ending is just the words, but the moment never came. There's a poetic line and then some. You can't force fate. W. It's a B-plus song. Track 7. Are You a Hypnotist? The opening is viscerally terrifying, but quickly rescinds in what we've grown accustomed to over the course of the album. It feels surreal, like I've taken something I way totally shouldn't have. This really does feel like more of the same. They said the title of the song. <laughs> it was Japanese at the top of the album cover, which I can half-assedly translate as The Flaming Lips. You are alive, and this record is for enjoyment something something, because I can't get much after this, because the one kanji here that could tell me the meaning is far too blurry for me to read. Yeah, I told you it was half-assed. In that track, I feel kind of pathetic for not knowing how the hell I would translate that, so it's a B. Track 8, It's Summertime. I'm starting to get a bit tired, honestly. This track feels a lot less dense, given that everything's actually audible this time. It's about, I think, some kind of depression, which doesn't go away, even the pretty weather. It's just within you, and the world goes on. It's summertime, but the living isn't easy. There we go, stop thinking about your inner struggles and distract yourself with the beauty of the world will it last before it vanishes for another year. It's a really pretty song, one that I could listen to again and again and love more every time. It fades away over the course of 40 seconds or so, leaving It's Summertime with an A. Track 9, Do You Realize? Probably the most dreamy track. Everything's plus in this layer of reverb. Incredibly powerful and meaningful. It's about mortality and the bigger picture beyond your room. There's surprisingly not much to say about Do You Realize other than that's an A-. minus. Track 10. All we have is now. Opens feeling very empty. The vocals are kind of whiny here, which they are in all the songs, but it's most prevalent here. The effects on the vocals flash in and out, as if everything is collapsing around it. The track speeds up, ending the first set of lines. It's a pretty abstract concept with a simple message that all we have is now, in this moment. You will never exist in anything but the present because it's impossible to live in the past without freezing time. I feel a little from this track, and as we approach the end of the album, I feel it's deteriorating in quality, and the last track is a good stopping point. It's a B. Track 11. Approaching Pavonis Mods by Balloon. Utopia Planitia. The final track, here we are at the end. This one is instrumental. It's a very 70s acid rock styled song. A single trumpet appears here, which is neat, I guess. It's definitely the most unique song of the album, feeling much like an actual rock song rather than trippiness. And as quickly as it ends, well, as quickly as it started, it ends. I have nothing to say. It's kind of a lame closer, so it's a C. Final thoughts. A good album at the start, but slowly slips away in quality throughout, with a slight rebound for tracks 8 and 9. It's definitely worth checking out, and I like it enough, I guess. A final score of 770 out of 1100 gives this album a high plus, pretty stout grade. Has its highs, has its lows, and it's certainly listenable. Just skip Pink Robots Part 2, because it's not worth your time. I hope you all enjoyed this review, and I'll see you in the next one.